So this is how MNT works. Now moving on into the uh, major chunk of the presentation that is uh, sugar and diabetes. So by sugar here, I mean carbohydrates and related molecules. So why have I mentioned it as sugars? Because diabetes and sugar has become a very, you know, a common term that's been used these days. So what's new? We all know, uh, you know, carbohydrates are the worst enemies for diabetes is what the entire, uh, 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 the medical fraternity and the media has been posting. So what does research actually says here uh, the findings were actually uh, quite interesting for me as well. So this is a, a meta-analysis that was done in the year 2017, uh, where they found out the relationship between uh, total sugar, fructose and sucrose with the incidence of type 2 diabetes. And what they found out was there was no association of total sugars or fructose with type 2 diabetes. So this sounds really interesting, but again, we have to um, look into one important point that was uh, given here, which is uh, the studies had serious inconsistency between the studies of total sugars and fructose. So whatever research has been done still has certain loopholes which has to be fixed. So with this research in hand, uh, we cannot claim that, you know, uh, fructose can be had or you can have sucrose as much as you want in diabetes. Similarly, another research um, that was put up in the year 2021 in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed us that uh, a five-year follow-up prospective cohort study was done where uh, they found out that starch was an important factor in increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes. So what these two studies uh, tell us is always not whatever has been uh, told in the results section of a research paper does cannot be translated into practice. Yes, starch is an important uh, factor when it comes to increasing risk in diabetes, but here I cannot uh, go by the word that fructose or uh, total sugars does not really uh, correlate with the incidence of type 2 diabetes. And another important uh, area where we need to give focus is resistant maltodextrins. Resistant maltodextrins are a type of resistant starch about which we will be talking about in the subsequent slides. So this has been found to be a promising uh, food ingredient which has been used in some of the um, nutritional supplements been used. This is a novel viscous dietary fiber, which is classified as resistant starch type 5. Uh, this has um, a upper hand where it it has a low glycemic index. Uh, it helps in uh, ferment. It, it gets fermented in the colon to, you know, release short chain fatty acids and helps in modulating the gut microbiota. So uh, these days we know that whatever diseases or lifestyle related uh, uh, conditions come up, a gut microbiota plays a major role. So here resistant maltodextrins have a good future, um, good future in treating diabetes as well. So when I talk about treating diabetes, it's not just, you know, uh, reducing the blood sugar levels, but also reducing the inflammatory markers, reducing the obesity incidence, as well as uh, reducing the overall A1C levels. And another uh, area of interest would be artificial sweeteners and natural sweeteners. So uh, why sweeteners? Because these days people still want to eat healthy and uh, uh, they want their cakes, but they want their cakes without sugar. They want to have their biscuits, but it has to be, you know, uh, without sugar. So all this lead, uh, led people, food scientists to develop certain chemicals, uh, especially the artificial sweeteners, which can give them the same amount of uh, sweetness without increasing the calories or inc increasing their uh, blood glucose spike. So uh, there is a lot of evidence to say that, you know, there, there is uh, uh, um, artificial sweeteners or natural sweeteners are safe to consume, but long-term studies still need to, you know, give clear cut um, bottom line information that they are still safe to use. Short term, yes, they are safe to use, but long term, we still do not know. And there, there also been, you know, a bit, an, aftertaste issues like uh, uh, this is from a practical point of view most of them don't really like taking sweeteners because it gives a bitter aftertaste especially the natural sweeteners and uh, also there has been certain uh, cases where we see uh, overuse of these sweeteners leading to kidney and liver issues because of uh, the residues that they leave behind in the body. So when I talk about another important sugar how which is a 
the fructose fructose has been used as an important sugar substitute in most of the bakery products as well as other uh, processed foods so it it is not actually mentioned in the ingredient label as fructose it is in, uh, it has been uh, mentioned as invert sugar or corn syrup or fructose syrup so all these are nothing but different forms of fructose this is a very uh, important ingredient that has to be eliminated from a person's diet because here you can see you know a very uh, clustered uh, diagram where you can see the various metabolic effects of fructose first when it increases visceral adiposity and helps uh, and hence it will definitely uh, lead to weight gain and it also causes unregulated hepatic uptake of uh, fructose metabolism which increases de novo lipogenesis and which leads to increased lipid uh, levels in the liver causes insulin resistance insulin resistance causes increased vldl production and also it leads to uh, increased uric acid so uh, most of the um, people who are on a low uric acid diet also need to cut down on their fructose because it indirectly increases the uric acid in the body uh, and also the, there is increased cvd risk when there is high fructose consumption